There's Danny Flexen here for seconds out. Delighted to be joined by the final boss, Sam Jones, as we're now calling him. Sam, how you doing, mate? I like that, Danny. I like the final boss. Um, yeah, I'm good, mate. I'm good. I've uh, had a mad couple of weeks, but yeah, it's all, it's all, um, it's all good. It's all good. It's all part of, it's all part of boxing. Well, we're going to get into all of that, but first of all, we're coming off a show last night in Sheffield. I saw. You were effusive in your praise on social media for both Dalton Smith and Sandy Ryan. Equally impressive, kind of in different ways, um, over Terry Harper and Jose Zapida, respectively. Just tell us your reflections on those performances. Yeah, it was the whole card was brilliant. Like I re and I, that's the reason why I came. Usually, I'm I'm not like getting a bit older now, Danny. So like, when I'm not got fighters on the show, I don't really go as much anymore. But I thought to myself, it's 45 minutes up the road. Every fight on the card, I was looking forward to. Hmm. Um, I missed Nico Levias as fight because I just and I, but I got there as Campbell Hatton was 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 ring walking. But yeah, um, from top to bottom, um, what we're we talking about first, we're talking about Sandy. <laughs> yeah, Sand, so Sandy, Sandy was outstanding. She really was. She was. She was. She was outstanding yesterday, and that her her career, in my opinion, needed a performance like that because I don't think she's probably shown her full potential until like, like you've seen her kind of have a good few rounds and then lose a couple. Like that was like a flawless performance, wasn't it? It was a flawless performance. And it was like a real statement of, of intent to say, look, I'm the best one, four, seven. I'm the best world to wait in the world, basically. And and who could really argue after a performance like that? So yeah, she, she did a, she did a great job. And uh, Terry, yeah, she was just, out of a depth yesterday. And then you've got Dalton Smith in the main event. Yeah. Now, let's not be, let's not, you know, tell any lies here. Tell me when I'm telling lies. Uh, Jose Zapida has seen better days, but he's generally only been put away by people at the top level. Has Dalton yeah, Smith now proved that that's where he belongs? Yeah. I, I, he's, He's definitely like I, I think Dalton's class anyway. Without the, the without having to prove it against Zapida, like he's shown me enough to think why well, he can compete at the top level. But I don't know whether you can say oh he's like it's the elite level, world level. It's I don't know. But Dalton was again. Dalton was flawless yesterday because if you looked at the first round, you could see Zapida um, slow feet, but he he was. A heavy puncher, and you could see that when when he was when Dortmund was taking the the shots on the gloves, he's, it was like vibrating. <laughs> so 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 you knew like this guy's this guy's dangerous. But the, the the thing that impressed me the most about Dalton yesterday was um, similar to Jack Catchell, really, in the sense of his patience. He was very very patient, and then uh, he put him away beautifully with a body shot. A fantastic performance from from Dalton, and hopefully now because listen, I missed the big. Sheffield Knights, yeah, the old Kelbrook Knights, and hopefully Dalton. That the the um like what Eddie was saying in the interview yesterday. I think there was four and a half or five thousand there. Let's hope next one seven and eight, and then a complete sellout, which is in inevitably going to happen. It's great for great for British boxing, and uh, I'm really happy for Dalton. I, I've got a lot of respect for Dalton and and, and that gym. Uh, I like Grant Smith. I think he's a fantastic underrated coach. Um, so yeah. Great performance from Dalton yesterday. Really enjoyed it. A lot of the talk in the pre-fight build-up was about Dalton potentially fighting Adam Azim at some point. And, and more importantly, Boxer apparently telling <laughs> Eddie Hearn, according to Eddie, that Azim will not be fighting Dalton Smith next, despite the fight being uh, sent to Persbid by both British Boxing Board of Control, Dalton's the British champion, and the European Boxing Union, for whom the champion is Adam Azim. What, what do you make of it all? It is an absolute shit show. And I feel sorry for Adam Azim, genuinely. I genuinely feel sorry for him because he doesn't really deserve this. Do you understand what I mean? Like, like, do you want to say this? Like, like he's getting terrorised on social media. And Adam's not one of those brash guys that, likes tweets a lot and, like, 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 and says and calls out. He isn't that type of person, but he's in a very, very sticky situation here because he's not been looked after, in my opinion. He, he has not been looked after and he has not been protected by somebody like, look, people like Eddie Hearn, Frank Warren, who have been around, Eddie's been around a long time, Frank Warren's been around forever. If they smell a bit of blood, you're fucked. 
you're fucked. You really are, because they will go directly for the wound. The jugular, and di- yeah. They will go directly for the wound, directly for the <laughs> for, for, for the blood. They, they smell blood and they will have you. And all week, Eddie's kind of, he's, he's checkmated them in the sense of, and because, listen, I don't know whether, what why they don't, why they're not doing interviews and stuff and and whatnot, but he needs someone to come out and say, hold on a minute, no, this is happening, that's happening. Adam Azim's being forced to tweet stuff after the fights. I feel sorry for him because I like Adam Azim, and I mean that. I I really like him. I think he's a brilliant fighter as well that's going to go a long way. But he's kind of being forced now where people won't take it seriously. Do you know when he says, oh, I'll fight... Hey, Sean Davis at Wembley and TFM. Well, no, you won't, because you're ducking Dalton, Dalton Smith. And I'm saying that as a what, what the the, uh, the yes. So I'm not saying that before anyone thumbnails me on here and saying <laughs> uh, saying that. They will but, anyway, but yeah. But I know, but he's in a position now where he's 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 bit he's slightly fucked because he's not been protected, in my opinion. I think they, they handle it so poorly, like the Fraser Clark thing, like Fraser Clark, I know like he's fighting Fabio now, but his credibility, when, when that happened, the same thing that like, with this, uh, the, the Chev Clark situation, the no mention of the, the, of the Chev Clark situation, Caroline Dubois, it was, it was a similar, it was a similar, uh, a similar situation. It was, it's just like, oh my God, again, then, the first bit let, situations. Let's say that from Boxer's perspective, and we don't know if this is true or not, but let's say they feel that Adam Azeem's not ready for Dalton Smith at the Come moment, and, okay. which most people would agree. What should they have done? How should they have dealt with it? Okay, so weeks ago when this was an, an, an announced, they probably should have wrote to the board saying, we're going a different direction immediately. Because all that happens when you wait, because what they've done is, and I know this for a fact, they would have watched last night and thinking, please, Apida, please knock Dalton Smith clean out of his trainers. Please do that. <laughs> and the opposite's happened. And now it's fucking worse. The situation's fucking worse. It, it's worse than ever because it's now, what do you do? You're going to have to vacate your belt and like after a performance like that. And then when people interview you after your next fight, it's like, oh, yeah, I want to fight Tia Fimula. But it's like, no, you don't. Bro, no, you don't. Like, and so I feel, I feel genuinely sorry for him because he's a, he's not that type of person, Adam. Which you know that he's not like, a, oh, I'm gonna smash this guy, I'm gonna beat this guy. Like he gets in there, he does his job, and um, I don't, I don't know, but it's, it's a very, it, it's, it's so inexperienced. The, the, the like, oh, listen, McGuigan's around him. They're very experienced people. So even there, I know they'll be thinking, "Oh my God, this is a this is a, 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 a this is a shit show," because they're trying to sell him as the next superstar, which he could be, by the way. But after a performance like that, he, he, oh, from Dalton, I, I don't know. All I know is, and I'm not saying, "Oh, I'm the big I am." Like you find a way of like wangling it out if you're representing that fighter. Because if I'm representing Adam Azim, I'm not allowing that to, to happen. Or yeah. I'm gonna take the flat. Or I'm gonna take the flat for well, exactly. It. If you were a boxer, you should be going out there saying, "Look, Adam really it's wants my to decision. fight. He's been banging yeah. down our door, but we're not gonna let him do it." Co- correct. But now, because you've left it so long, it just makes you all look bad. But like what I say, if I'm representing Adam Azim and I think on the back of my head, I've got to let these people think that no. I'm gonna say, "Look, he's 21." Um, I wouldn't be calling out. I, I would just be saying, like, blame me. Do you want to tell me? Yeah. <laughs> but blame, but blame me, but blame me. Give me the flag, but let him go on and have his. I don't know. It's a shit show, Danny. It really is a shit show, and I really feel for him because now he could he could almost be in a position where I'm almost certain Adam Azim will be telling everybody around him, "I've got to fight this guy." Now I've got to fight this guy because if I duck him, my credibility is. <laughs> Yeah, you can't be selling him as this. Oh, he's he's ready. He's going to be the youngest ever world champion. All that. No, ultimately, you've been mandated to fight Dalton Smith by two organizations. Like like the. the oh God, he puts he's pressure on the next fight as well. If they don't, fight, yeah. is it? who's God, he going to fight Danny, instead? And that's what I mean. Like, so you can't like you can't. Oh, I don't know. I just wouldn't. I wouldn't be in that position, by the way. I wouldn't. I know I say I wouldn't want to be in that position because I just know I wouldn't be. I wouldn't allow any of my fighters to be in that position where they're em- embarrassed. Because I, if if worse came to, to worse, I would just take the flak for it. I'd just come out and say my decision. 
he's he, there's we will fight him in a couple of fights time we need a couple more experience exp, a bit more of experience because he's a bit older and just i know what i'm trying to say danny i just wouldn't allow my fighter to be yeah very very embarrassed like what they're in, they're, they're doing with 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 adam azim i think he deserves better um so I don't want to. I don't want to give Adam Azim any stick because I think he's. I think he's brilliant. I think he's going to do great things. But it, it, it's a bit of a humiliating time at the moment. Moving on to one of your fighters, in fact, your most celebrated fighter currently, Jack Casserell. We saw was it last week or the week before the Josh Taylor yeah. rematch has now been pushed back because of an injury yeah. to Josh. What was your? I'm sure you're a lot more level headed now. But what was your immediate reaction when you heard? Yeah. Look, D Danny, Matchroom were out. I thought it was kind of set up because Matchroom came out to film Jack in Tenerife and we was having our dinner. And as you'll see it in the documentary, and as Tom Grant was calling me to tell me what was happening, Matchroom are filming us. So they're getting the live reaction of right. us hearing. So it's, it's, it's like an episode of Coronation Street. Obviously, there's an element of frustration, but in the back of uh, Jack, if you ask him, when you speak to him, Josh always wanted the 25th. Of, of May date. That was the date he is his team originally pushed for. So it stinks a little bit. But at the end of the day, Jack was had it in his back of his head he was going to pull out anyway. So Jack was just like, it is what it is. No problem. Let's let's that's why Jack's not come out on social media saying, oh he's a shit bag and like and same reason me because we were we all half expected it. Jamie Moore was another one he said they'll delay the fight. They'll delay the fight. So we all kind of obviously when we were getting the call we were like oh, it's, such, it's a shitter, but then at the same time, is Jack's used to Josh pulling out, so it's it's um it's and pulling out and postponing and doing that. So let, let's let's see. But look, listen, I, I want Josh to get into the ring fully prepared, um, injury free, and look, his credibility is relying on him come, turning up on the twenty fifth of May because if he doesn't turn up on the twenty fifth of May, then. Promoters are, are going to look at him and think, I'm not going to work with him because it's like you can't be trusted to like come out on that date. But like what I keep saying about Josh, right? And I don't want to keep speaking about him. He's a great fighter. I think the best Scottish fighter that's ever they've ever produced. He's had a Hall of Fame career, hasn't he, really? He's an undisputed champion. So great fighter, but your credibility rely your, your credibility is hanging in the balance. So we'll see you on the 25th of May, Josh Taylor. Have you, as a team, received any sort of evidence of the injury? Mm, yeah, in matchroom, I, I think they've been it's been sent to matchroom, but I'm not interested, Danny, because like at the end of the day, Josh has got to either fight Jack on the 25th of May, or he may as well just put his very decorated boots on the shelf on the on the on the peg. Yeah, I like the way you tried to make that analogy as accurate as possible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> decorated boots on the peg. Um, just moving on from that, I want to go from a current charge of yours to a former charge. And I know it's a sensitive subject. It's someone we both care about, you certainly more than me, in yeah. Joe Joyce. Um, we saw him return from those back-to-back -back defeats to Zhile Zhang against Cash yeah. Ali. Got him out of there, ultimately, but uh, a laboured performance from all accounts. And there has uh... been talk afterwards on social media, especially it was asked, who should uh, Joe Joyce fight next? It came out from Frank Warren's official account. And a lot of people said he should retire. A few said Dillian White as well, which is an interesting one. But quite a few said it's time to retire for Big Joe. You're very close with him still. What are your views? I know it's, it's you notice like when I ask, it's the only question, Danny. There's there's many questions in boxing where I, I, I I've never ducked any questions, but it's very hard for me to talk on because like I have my my deep thoughts about it. And obviously that's why, like, I've not gone to even watch one of Joe's fights yet because uh, even now, listen, I speak to Joe, like, I met, met we, we we speak, we're close and, like, I love him to pieces, Danny. Genuinely, I love, I love him to pieces. He's like my family member. Um, I, I looked at Joe's performance, right? And it looked to me as though he was going through the motions, um, didn't particularly want to be in there, if if I'm honest with you, like he just he he, he knew he was good enough to beat Cash Ali. Do you know what I mean? Like Joe could turn up, no disrespect to Cash Ali, fifty years old, overweight, and he, and he would dispatch of of Cash Ali. And I don't want to disrespect Cash because he's a brilliant guy and he's a good fighter, but he he's not the same level of Joe Joyce, even a Joe Joyce that's not a, a non motivated Joe Joyce. 
Um, but Joe just looked as though like he was going in there just to do it, if that makes sense. Now, you asked me about whether Joe should retire. I've had my opinions and I've and I've messaged Joe and I've told him what I believe. If Joe is going to carry carry, because bear in mind, listen, people have this perception of Joe that he's daft and he's he does he doesn't he's not the best talker. He's got a fine art degree. You know, you, you've got you've got to be a specially talented person to have a fine art degree. Yeah. There's more to life than boxing. Joe's thirty eight years old, but if he is to to continue, I want to just see him happy, Danny. Do you understand? What I mean, I want to see a happy Joe Joyce. I want to see him excited to get in the gym and be the the weight that he's supposed to be, not two stone bigger than what he's he's supposed to be. I just want him to be happy. I want him to be happy. I want him to have the right fights, but. Ultimately, I don't look after Joe anymore. I don't look after his career, but I will always offer my opinion, whether people like it or not, uh, to Joe. Um, but yeah, my opinion is is just that I want to see him happy. I want to see him healthy, and I want to I want to see him enjoy the, the the fruits of his labor with his money. I want I want because he's listen. Joe's had a career that most people will never dream of. Should have been Olympic gold medalist. One of, I think, if not the most decorated male amateur of all time coming out of this country of all the medals he's won, Commonwealth Games gold, European gold, um, world silver medalist, Euro uh, Olympic silver medalist, um, multiple national titles. He's won two Commonwealth belts, a British title, a European title, a WBO interim, ranked number one in the world. And he's come up short against Zhang. Um I, I don't know, but that that's my opinion. Whether it, I've, whether I've not really made sense, I don't know. All I know is I want Joe to be very happy. I want him to be healthy, and that's all I care about. I want to see him happy. That that that's that's all I care about. I I, I love him to bits. Let let me phrase it slightly differently because I know you're struggling here, and I understand completely why. Yeah. If you got the news tomorrow morning, and you'd probably get it directly from Joe before any of us found out that he was retiring, what would your yeah. reaction be? What would you feel? I I'd be happy for him i'd be i'd be happy for him because i know that it'd be his decision and th listen watching a joe joyce fight yeah even when joe was like in his absolute peak when when i believe when i was like around him and going into the park of fight i think that was that he was he was brilliant in that fight watching a joe joyce fight night is very stressful danny very stressful so Imagine like when I watched like when I used to watch um that's why when Joe and S Jam signed Lerone Richards, I used to watch Lerone and feel really relaxed. I used yeah. to think I love watching Lerone fight. I love that like, now with Jack the same. I think because they're they're elusive. Do you know what I mean? They're elusive. So I used to sit there and think, oh, I love a Lerone Richards fight now. I love a Jack Catcher because it's like I don't have to stress too much because I know there there is Joe is is just crash bang wallet and he's all action and he's given the fans great nights. But if he continues. I want it to be to continue for the right reasons and that he wants to do it and he's happy. That That's that's all. I know I'm probably half swerving the, the question, but ultimately I just want him to be happy. I want him to be happy, Danny. Well, I appreciate your candor. I know there's only so much you can say on that subject, but that's absolutely fine. Sam, really appreciate your time. As I said to you earlier off camera, I'm about to go watch a new Ghostbusters film. So I've got to get a move on. For Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah. What a what a film. What a film. All right, Danny. Nice to speak to you, mate. Nice to catch up. And you, mate. You take care and I'll speak to you soon. Take care, mate. See you in a bit.